Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Bradburn from TopTipBio.com and in this video tutorial you're going to learn how to create, customize and interpret violin plots. So what are violin plots? A violin plot is similar to the box and whisker plot, however they also provide more information about the distribution of the data set. The violin shows the density of the data at a given Y value with the edge of the violin extending further from the midline in a manner proportionate to the density of data at that Y value. This kernel density method usually results in a distribution that extends above the largest value and extends below the smallest value. As violin plots are meant to show the empirical distribution of the data, PRISM, like most programs, does not extend the distribution above the highest data value or below the smallest. In some programs, violin plots extend out to a point. So as you will see within PRISM, violin plots usually seem cut off or flat at the top and bottom. An example of a violin plot next to a box and whisker plot and a scatter plot using the same data set can be shown on screen. So why are violin plots useful? Violin plots are particularly useful to use when you have a large amount of data that you want to present on a graph to demonstrate the distribution of the data set. In these situations, it is not suitable to use a scatter plot since there will be too much data to present all the points on the same graph. As you can see in the example, the violin plot provides more information about the density of the data set compared to a box and whisker plot without overwhelming the reader with all of the data points compared to the scatter plot. And in this video tutorial, I will show you how to create this particular violin plot. So let's go into Prism and begin the video tutorial. I'm going to start by selecting a column type of table and graph. And then I'm going to enter or import data into a new table and enter replicate values stacked into columns and then click the create button. I'm just going to paste in the data that I've prepared earlier. And in this example, this data contains two data sets that have completely different distributions so that you can understand the benefits of using violin plot. So now we have our data within our data sheet. We can then go to the connected graph sheet on the left hand window to open up the graph wizard. Here under the column graph family we want to select the box and violin tab and there are two options for creating violin plots. The first is the vertical violin plot where the violins are presented vertically and on the right hand side there's also the option to have the violin plots presented horizontally. And in this example I'm going to use the vertical violin plot. Additionally in the drop down menu underneath under plot you can select to plot the violin plot only or the violin plot with all of the data points superimposed. Violin plots are most useful when there is so much data that showing the individual data points becomes distracting. But if you have a limited amount of data points, the violin plot without superimposing the data points may actually give a false representation that you have a better idea about the distribution of the data than you actually do. For this example, I'm going to just plot the violin plot only. I'm going to click the OK button. So here is our basis for our violin plot. Let's just go over a few features of the violin plot itself. Within the plot, just like a box and whisker plot, there are three points. The first line in the middle represents the median. The line at the top is known as the third quartile or the 75th percentile. And the line at the bottom is the first quartile or the 25th percentile. As you can clearly see, the median and the first and third quartiles for group one is a lot lower than that of group two. So let's now change the appearance of our violin plot. Firstly, if you'd like to change the colour of the violin plots themselves, the easiest way to do this is to use the Change Colour toolbar at the top. This feature is discussed in more detail in a separate Quick Tip video tutorial. But for now, I'm going to go to the Format Graph button. And now with the Format Graph window open, we can start to change the appearance of the violin plot itself. So with the first group selected, I can change the settings of the first group. If I wanted to change both of the group's appearance at the same time, I can change the global settings. Changing the global settings 
is discussed in a separate quick tip video tutorial. Now let's go through each of these appearance settings in more detail. Firstly, under style, under the port drop down menu, as shown in the previous wizard, you can choose to port the vinyl input only or the vinyl input and superimposing all of the data points on top. For this example, I'm just going to port the vinyl input only. To change the color of the vinyl input itself, you can use the vinyl input options here. Here you can change the fill color, the fill pattern, the border color, and the border thickness. So for the first group, I'm going to change the border thickness to one point. And I'm going to click the apply button to preview my changes. So now notice that the border thickness for the first group is thinner than that of the second group. While I'm here, I'm also going to change the fill color of the first group to a violet color. And then click the apply button to preview the changes. Another aspect that you may wish to change is that it's known as smoothing. So here there are three options, either light, medium or high. So light smoothing shows more details of the distribution, whereas heavy smoothing gives a better idea of the overall distribution. For example, if I select the light smoothing option for the first group and click apply, notice now that the distribution for the first group is showing a lot more detail than that of the second group, which is currently set to medium smoothing. Alternatively, if I select high smoothing and click apply, notice now that the heavy smoothing gives a better idea of the overall distribution. So I'm going to change the smoothing to high. Next, I'm going to toggle to my second group and then what I'm going to do is change the fill color of the second group to an orange color. And then I'm also going to change the border thickness to one point and change the smoothing to high to match that of the first group. And then click the apply button. In the next options, known as symbols, these will become available if you choose to plot a violin plot and superimpose the data points on top. By doing so, you can then change the appearance of the symbols themselves, including the color, the shape, size, and the border color and thickness. Underneath quartiles, this is where you can change the appearance of the quartile lines within the violin plots themselves. So remember, the top dotted line is the third quartile and the bottom dotted line is the first quartile within the violin plot. So I'm going to change the color of the quartile lines to be a gray color. I'm going to do this for both of my data sets, so I'm going to change the global appearance by pressing and holding the control key on my keyboard, and I'm going to change this to a grey colour, and then click the apply button. So this is a very subtle change, however, this now means the quartile lines are in a grey colour as opposed to the median line, which is in a black colour that stands out a bit more. And this just gives a bit more emphasis on the median line. With that in mind, you can also change the appearance of the median line separately by changing the settings underneath. You can change the color, the thickness, as well as the pattern. But for this example, I'm going to leave the settings as they are for the median line. In the additional options underneath, you can choose to select to have a right y-axis as well as a left y-axis. You can also show a figure legend. However, in this example, since there are only two groups, there is space to include their group names on the x-axis underneath, so it would not make sense to have a figure legend in this example. So I'm happy with this file input, and I'm going to click the OK button to return back to the graph. So just to finish off, I'm going to give my graph a y-axis title by clicking the y title. I'm going to change this to response. I'm also going to remove my x-axis title because the group names are presented underneath. It's quite self-explanatory. And I'm also going to delete the title of the graph itself by clicking and pressing the delete button. So there we have our finished violin plot. So in conclusion, in this video tutorial, you've learned how to create and interpret a violin plot within Prism. So remember that violin plots show the median and quartiles similar to a box and whisker plot. However, violin plots do a much better job at showing the distribution of the values. So always consider using violin plots instead of box and whisker plots. Music